Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we welcome you to church today, and um, we're glad you're here. As you can see, uh, Cassie and Bo are not here. Cassie had a medical emergency. She has a, a large kidney, and she went to the hospital, and she has an infection, so she was admitted last night. Um, so I want to keep Kathy Bo in our prayers, and also um, in connection with that, some of the music Elwood doesn't have, so we're, we're going to be we're going to have to flex it a little bit today, and uh, so he's going to do some hymns and praise in place of the praise music. So uh, we'll get by, you know. Um, so we're glad you're here. We just want to cover uh, some of the announcements. Uh, again, not a whole lot. Uh, just uh, there, uh, there's a trans. What's the word? Transposion in the bulletin. The church council meeting's not on a Sunday. 624 is a Wednesday, and 628 is a Sunday. So other than that, uh, uh, that's what we have on our uh, calendar. So just wanted to mention also, we haven't had a lot coming back yet, so we're still trying to you know, put things up online. Um, next week, we will return to like a limited coffee hour outside for Darlene or whoever Darlene designates will pour people coffee to get out. And I've been, I don't know, how many of you have been back to restaurants yet? I have. And the, the protocol is there is that you go in and then once you're seated, you can take your mask off. I, unless someone really objects, I don't, beginning next week, I don't have a problem with that either. Is anyone real, I mean, we're having kind of a little meeting here. Does anyone really feel strongly against that? We wear our mask in and out, but once you are seated, you can take them off if you want to. Because that's what the restaurants are all doing. So, um, yeah, right. Do we need to be six? We can still be six feet apart? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you measure the distance between you and I'm no. going to get, I'm bringing my, I, I, I should get a yardstick and I have a, I'll walk around with a double yardstick and if you're not, I can kind of go that's back to <laughs> Right. Um, I know some of the groups want to come back. And the scouts, uh, of course, Ray wrote me like a seven page document, which is, you know, as long as you follow the general rules. But there is social distance. That's where's Iris at? Uh, she's back here somewhere. So I talked to Iris about like um, the homeless ministry wants to come back. But again, two people cannot be in the same car unless you're from the same household, right? That's because you cannot social distance in a car. I'm not going to be the policeman of everyone coming back. That's not my job, my role. I'm just going to give you the guidelines, and that's what they are. So, um, but I, I can't be the policeman of every every group and everybody who moves around. So, uh, please, please uh, keep that in in mind. So, beginning next week, like I said, we will have uh, a limited coffee hour, and once you're seated, if you want to begin taking off your mask, again, is every if you're okay with that? Because uh, like I said that's what the restaurants are doing. We went to. Um, Eat Park the other day, my wife and I, Joey, and uh, you know, you go in you, and you sit down, you take your mask off. So the main points of contact are entrance and exit, as I see it. But um, I don't know if there's a, a perfect answer, um, but I really, I, I'm 100% convinced there's no virus here, there's no virus, you know, that's going to come down out of the windows and strike you dead. Okay, and I, from this is just my perspective. Everyone has their own. I think we've got to stop living in fear all the time. That's what the Bible says. In fact, I'm going to preach on Psalm 46. It says, do not fear. And the Bible tells us that we just can't be afraid of every risk. Yes, 100,000 people died in the United States of this coronavirus. Many of them were already had seriously complicated conditions and probably would have died within a year anyway. You know how many die in auto accidents every year? 1.25 million people die in vehicle accidents. Think every single year. So you're more likely to encounter a problem in your vehicle than you ever would uh, um, from any virus. And myself, I motorcycle a lot and I'm even more at risk. So I don't fear a lot, basically. I really don't fear very many things. One thing I fear is heights, right? So like, don't ask me to go high on ladders or anything like that. But other than that, I'm pretty good. But I want everybody to be comfortable. We're all in different places. That's why we're trying to still record the services. And for those who are not, um, you know, um, guess who's here today? Where's Ruth at? Ruth is here, right? 
Ruth is here, so God bless her. Uh, she's a real lady of strength. Okay, so I think I kind of covered the announcements. Is there anything I missed that you think? I mean, there isn't a lot there. Um, as I said, some of the groups are coming back to the scout, not the path, but the troop four and, um, and the homeless ministry when I come back. But like I said, I gave you the protocols. You have to follow them. I'm not going to be the policeman of every single group. Any other announcements? Um, you can take your mask off if you want to tell me something. The whole thing's just kind of weird. Who thought we'd be here a year ago? But, um, okay, with no further ado, we have welcome and announcements. We do welcome you. Um, I, I, I got used to saying on the videos on Pastor Don Kephart. If I never said that right for service, I figured it knew who it was, or it's in the bulletin, so uh, it wasn't hard to figure out. So with no further ado, uh, let's go ahead and uh, join in prayer together. If you would stand and, uh, you know, you can say the words in your heart or whatever you want to do or head and then we'll go to the call to worship. God of creation, we desire to give you all our worship. Purify our hearts that our worship may be pure. Make us holy that we may worship you in holiness. It is because of you that we are here. Let us recognize your presence and essential role you play in each moment of time together. Without you, we are nothing. Guide us as we worship. May we bring your honor and glory. Amen. As a tree beside the water has the Savior planted me, all of my fruit shall be in season. I shall live eternally. I shall not be moved. Anchored to the rock of ages, I shall not be Okay, what are we doing here? Elwood's, uh, how great that'll work. Um, it's the same thing as last Sunday. I suppose I can't actively encourage you to sing, but if you have your mask on. Um, so I would fix how great that'll work because a lot of people probably know it. You're welcome to stay standing. You're welcome to sit. You're welcome to take this time to pray. You're welcome to take this time to listen for God's voice, whatever. Are we just doing one? Yeah, one, 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 just that one. one. At this time, okay. Yeah, I'm going to sing it, so we'll see how okay. it goes. I'm just going to sit and listen then. <laughs> you might not want to listen. <laughs> yeah.
At this time is our presentation of our tithes and offerings. So as a reminder, I know we have a little bit of a different group than we had last week. There is a, a basket at the uh, back by the tech booth. So if you could put your offering or tithes in there, uh, whether, you know, during your coming or going, so we don't want to pass the plate or have the ushers walk up to you. So uh, you can do that. There's also online giving. The information is in the bulletin or online. So if I just read off uh, whatever it is, um, churchcenter.com and so forth, you probably won't remember it anyway, but if you're going to do online giving, it is there. There's also uh, an app that can be downloaded called uh, Church, uh, what is it, Church uh, Center. Um, so Church Center, if you go into your search for apps, and it, you can easily find it if you want to give that way. Uh, so we'll collectively receive all of our giving, whether you gave it before or after or online or through the app. And uh, we'll praise God with our, our doxology at, uh, at this time. <laughs> Gracious God, as we come to you this day, we give you thanks for all that you have done for us. Even in these times that seemed very troubled in many ways, we know that you are our fortress, you are our sanctuary, and that you are with us. And so we respond to the great love that you have given to us, and we thank you for being with us. We pray this and dedicate all of our tithes and offering in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So uh, let's see, I guess you may be seated again. You're getting like, uh, getting your exercise uh, in today. Um, let's go to our prayer list. I think we need to continue to pray for the continued eff effect of the COVID-19. I know sometimes we get tired of talking about it, right? And uh, there's just so much going on, but there is a major impact and in so many different ways, and also the continuing civil unrest that we have in our country. Um, we need to turn to Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. Uh, going to a more individual level, um, we want to pray for Karen Crowther, who had surgery, I believe, last week. So uh, we want to pray for her recovery. It's from knee surgery. And Glenda Abraham is Carol's sister. How's your sister doing? Did she? Um, she went home yesterday. She went home yesterday. Okay, okay great. Okay, great. She had uh, hip replacement, so we want to uh, pray for her continued recovery. And also, um, Ethan Webb, the little guy that over here, uh, he had surgery on his throat. I talked to um, his mom this week. Well, not physically talk, email talk. Um, and he is going to be laid up for two weeks. He has to be on the couch, he said, for two weeks and to recover from this surgery on his throat. So we want to pray for Ethan and uh, Erica and Josh and the family there. Um, if you have anything else that you think you could get to me that I can hear, uh, if you want to pull your mask down a little bit to say something that's real important, go ahead, Alice. And passed away, you said, so we want to pray for his family. Was it um, natural causes? or? Yeah, he had Alzheimer's the last okay. couple of years of his life, and I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, he was 83. Okay. Old, so. We'll pray for the family of Alan. Are there any others? Uh, yes, Carol. So this was a friend of yours who worked with you at Sam's Club, and she passed away. Okay. What What is her name? Beverly. Beverly. And her son was a And her son, okay. Okay. We'll pray.
pray for Beverly and her sons and her, her family. Thank, thank you, uh, Carol. Any, any others today? Okay. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly and gracious Father, as we come to you this day, uh, we remember our country, the virus, the civil unrest, everything that is happening, Lord. We pray for peace and for healing. We pray for those names that were lifted up here today, Lord. We pray for um, Alan and his family and the co-worker of uh, Carol who passed away. We pray for uh, Karen and Ethan and Glenda as they recover from their respective surgeries, Lord, that you may give them healing and wholeness uh, during this time of recovery. Lord, we lift all these things up to you. We remember the prayer that you taught to your disciples that we lift up this day as our prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So where we go now? Normally in a song. Do we, are we doing a song here? In the garden. In the garden. That's a... The scripture today, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, is uh, Psalm 46. Let's look at the uh, word of God. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, right? Get that? We will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, 
Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall, and he lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. And he says, be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of God for we who are the people of God. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we come to the time of message, I pray that your Holy Spirit would help me, who, the one who is the helper, to say your word. I ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Several years ago, um, when I was living in the Somerset area, the town there we lived in was called Stoy's Time. And every Memorial Day, they had a parade that would, you know, come down through Main Street. And so we were there, and uh, my daughter, who was uh, about 12 or 13, 14 or something like that at the time, she was with us, and uh, the cars came past. And they were 1940s and 1950s vintage cars. And she said, Dad, uh, is that the kind of cars that you learned to drive in? And I just looked at her and I said, how would you think I am, right? I was born in 1960. That means I would have been driving cars in the, you know, my time would have been the late 70s, not 1940s or 50s. Um, but, you know, cars change over the years, don't they? Uh, and you could look at one time period, and you don't have to know a lot about cars to tell what time period they're from, because car from, let's say, the 50s looked very different from cars in the 70s. But one thing that is constant in the world is what? What is the only thing that's constant in the world? Change, Change exactly. It's the, just using cars as an example, think about how much they have changed over the years. One of the more recent developments in cars is that the majority of cars aren't actually what? Aren't cars anymore, they're SUVs, right? It, far, SUVs now far outsell cars. Um, so things change. Styles come and go. Flavors come and go. But that's why I called this sermon when I thought about giving it a title, is that God is not the flavor of the day, right? God doesn't go in and out of style like a car or anything else. When we watch um, older movies or TV shows, I like to watch them, the ones that were done in a certain year, because they show us things that were in flavor at that time, but aren't the thing anymore. And one thing I was watching a, a show called Madlock. I don't know how many of you remember that show. I think it was a detective show back. It was probably in the 1980s or something like that. But they showed uh, him using, or one of the characters, using uh, a car phone, remember? That's when, when, back then, they didn't have what we call flip phones, smartphones, cell phones, none of that terminology. What was it? It was strictly called a car phone because the idea was it was plugged into your car. You didn't carry it around with you everywhere. It was in your, the idea was you have a house phone and then if you're rich, you, you got a car phone, right? Because what other two place, what are what other place would you possibly need a phone? And back then, phones were just phones; they didn't do a million other things. Um, but the car phone from that Madlock show, the thing was like the size of a brick. It was like, I mean, it was like double the size of my Bible here, and uh, with the antenna sticking out. And could you imagine carrying that thing around? But that was it, and they were extremely expensive. They were hundreds of dollars, which of course, you know, money. Is worth uh, was worth a lot more than, and that was the idea of a car phone. There, things change all the time, right? 
And I want to do a little survey. We're going to have a little bit of fun today about how things are always in a state of change. Now, how many of you have had a rotary, how many of you have a rotary phone now? Anyone? Still have Ron. Ron, I told you you're behind the times. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I knew there would be at least one person. Uh, how many of you have had a rotary phone in your lifetime or seen one, right? Everybody here has had that. And must have comes the term dial. Like we, we still use the term, you know, dial someone up. But we don't, we haven't dialed in 50 years, right? Even after the dial went away as everything was push button, but we still use the terminology uh, of dial. How many of you can remember having milk delivered by a milkman? Remember the box out front and you put your, and you had the glass bottles and, and there was a reason for that because by and large the culture was that many women didn't go to work and also there was only one family car. So you needed to get things that you could go buy can or frozen things because they would last. But a lot of the fresh things that you needed you needed to get them some way, and then you had the milkman. Uh, I don't remember, I'm sorry, I don't want to be sexist, but I don't remember, I don't remember ever seeing a milk lady. So, uh, but I remember, uh, so you had the different milk companies out there, and there were uh, many of them that brought to you. How many of you remember when gasoline was less than 40 cents a gallon, right? I can remember that. I remember as a kid that uh, one of my gas stations, actually so many times I can remember it was in the 20s, right? Uh, and also, an attendant filled the tank for you, checked your oil, and cleaned your windows, right? Remember that? When's the last time you see that? Now, some states like, like New Jersey, by law, they have to, they don't have self-service, but I'm not sure how often they, you know, do the other thing. How many, okay, this is for the ladies here. How many of you remember when women wore white gloves and hats on a regular basis? So next time someone gets, no, one, no one's done this, but if anyone gets on me about wearing a tie or something like that, then I'm gonna come back at any lady and say, I wanna see your hat and your white gloves, <laughs> right? Because remember, they used to wear hats and white gloves even going shopping downtown. You would dress up and wear shopping. How many of you remember when we always dressed up to go out to dinner, right? Now, we don't do that. If we're going to run Eaton Park or wherever, Bob Evans, we don't dress up to go there. How many of you remember when all the stores were closed on Sunday and church was the only activity opened on Sunday morning? Right? Now, actually during this pandemic, I said to my wife, I said, you know, this does have a little bit of a feel to the 70s. Be, or even before, because m many of the stores, you know, we're used to stores being open 724, right? We went to, once I went to Home Depot, and I was there like 10 to 6, and it was closing at 6 o'clock. I, I think they, since then, have expanded our hours. We went to a Walmart that was closing at 8 o'clock, and we got there right before. So we're not used to that. We're used to them being open all the time, but not, that hasn't always been the case. Everything was closed on Sundays. My dad used to always say to me, when I first started driving, you know, not in, in my 73 Chevy Nova, not my 48 Dodge, like my daughter thinks I drove or something like that. Um, but, but, you know, that um, always keep, he said, always keep a quart of oil in the car because, you know, in case something happened, you'd have it. Well, I did that for years and years until I got to the point where I'm like, what am I going to do anyway? The car's so sophisticated. If I had that much of a massive oil loss, I'm not going to be able to do anything with a quarter oil anyway. And if I did need a quarter oil, every place, any, every uh, sheets or any store, even the dollars or everyone, you could run in and get a quarter oil if, if you had to. So I gave up that practice, but I, I held on to it for a very long time because my dad said, make sure you have a blanket and flares and a quarter of oil, <laughs> that's what the old timers did, you know, make sure you had an extra quarter of oil. So if we look around us, we realize that over the years, there has been a lot of change, right? I can't imagine uh, Ruth there, who's gonna be 100 this, this summer, um, the changes that she has seen in her life. And sometimes changes for the better, and sometimes not. And everyone has their own opinion about that, but there's one thing that doesn't change, and that is who? God doesn't change, right? Now, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to give you a heads up because 
Saying that God doesn't change doesn't mean that God is immobile. I, I think they're two different things. Because God is ultim the ultimate in mobility because why? We believe that God is everywhere all the time, right? <laughs> you can't get more mobile than that. But Psalm 46, when one looks at the core message, finds that it is saying that things all around us are changing, like shifting sand blown in the desert wind. But I am God, it says, and I am unchanging. Now, there are important teachings in this psalm that when applied to our faith walk will make all the difference in the world. And I believe that we have to start responding to things in faith instead of fear. There's too much fear going around of everything. Uh, we need to respond in faith, not in fear. The first takeaway from this psalm is this. Don't take comfort and security in things that are shifting and unable to provide in any kind of long-term, you know, eternal, spiritual way. Right? Don't take comfort in changing things. Because what happens when you do, you can't rely on them or stand on them. Well, we get attached to favorite, uh, favorite things, and I think we all do. I'm not saying that we don't. Uh, we get attached to favorite things. We must realize that this thing that we are holding on to is mutable, which is a fa fancy word meaning changeable, right? It, when we hold on to things that are can slip away, we better be pretty careful about that because that thing that we think is here forever isn't. And this includes styles, trends, even physical places. All of these things will one day not be around anymore because they are mutable. Psalm 46 even speaks of the whole created order as subject to change. It speaks of what? The earth giving way. The mountains falling into the sea. Nations in an uproar, right? These protests and riots, they're, they're affecting the whole world now, right? They're everywhere, from Europe to Australia, to everywhere. And uh, some of it is, I think it's taken on a life of its own. I saw that uh, the statue of Winston Churchill was defaced and they had to put protection around it in London. Do these people do, do they realize that in the 1940 world, you had two choices, Hitler or Churchill, right? And those who are older know this. That was the choices you had. No human is perfect. I'm sure Churchill might have had some views of Arabs or Africans that weren't uh, seeing them as unequal with white people. But think about that. You know, we don't live in it. There's no perfection. But that time, those are a choice. You either lined up behind Hitler, or you lined up behind Churchill. So um, things do change. Uh, and we see this passage, it talks about these nations in uproar, the earth melting at the voice of God. Now I want to make something clear. Psalm 46 is not saying not to enjoy all the things in God's creation, but rather not to make those things ultimate, because they are not. Things cannot be our source of everlasting peace and comfort because they are not forever. And we all have special places that mean something to us. Realize that they are on loan to you from God. Maybe it's your, your home, for example, and how you have everything that makes you comfortable there. Remember that everything that we have, or a piece of property, or I don't care what it is, Remember, the idea, this goes back to the stewardship. How much really belongs to us? Zero. Thank you, Alice. I'm so, this is what I miss. I live in there when, uh, before doing all the video stuff uh, uh, by myself, I miss interacting with people and calling out Alice for my hand. Right, it's zero, like we own nothing. We have nothing. Everything belongs to God. That's the concept of stewardship, right? Our talents, our abilities, our money, our land, nothing really belongs to us. It belongs to God. And it, he can take it away at any time he wants to. So these things are mutable. And the scripture is very clear about that, that they do not belong to us. Psalm 46 proclaims the, that only God is immutable, a theme that comes not just from one place in the scripture, but over and over again. I'm just going to give you a couple examples in the Old Testament book of Numbers, 
not a book we talk about a whole lot or preach from. It says, God is not a human that God should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Remember, son of man means human. That's why Jesus is what? His, he, we call him son of man, son of God, because he is human and God. So uh, God is not a human, right, that he should change his mind. Malachi 3, 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change. Can't be more implicit than that, right? He says, I do not change. James 1, 17 says, the Father in heaven does not change like shifting shadows. If God is immutable, unchangeable, he is the only solid ground that we can forever rely upon. Everything else is here today, gone tomorrow, and cannot be relied upon. For those of you who, well, whether you saw it in person or live, you may have come across sandbars out in the ocean. Now, some of them can last a few days, some of them last for years, but ultimately, they're not gonna, they're not gonna last forever, right? They're gonna be swept away. And when we stand on things that are like sandbars in life and hold on to those things, then we can expect to be swept away. We need to hold on to God. When we look at a closer, uh, closer look at Psalm 46, there are three verses that mention God as that solid ground upon which we stand, as, as opposed to everything else that is shifting sand, that is not reliable. And when we look at these three verses, they tell us of two distinct elements of God's solid ground. And I want to talk about these three verses and two distinct elements. The first one is verse 1 of Psalm 46. It says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. This verse speaks of sanctuary. Right? What is sanctuary? We call this room a sanctuary, right? Many churches have a sanctuary. But sanctuaries can be other places, too. Uh, in the Old Testament, sanctuaries were designated as cities and within a temple. And what a sanctuary is, what, what makes a sanctuary a sanctuary is because it speaks of, of God's safety and the presence of God. So the idea of sanctuary, it's a place that you are close to God, a place where you can feel the presence of God. It also offers you safety. It's a connection to God. Now, putting together Psalm 46, verses 7 and 11, not the store, but verses 7 and 11, the Lord, it says, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So the idea in this psalm, it mentions that God is a fortress twice in both of those verses. So what is a fortress? A, for a fortress generally is a high defensive place. Jerusalem, for example, where you know Jesus did, well, where Jesus was crucified and was the, the capital of Judea, uh, it was a, it was, it's built on Mount Zion, the city of David, which is, was a high defensive fortress. Because Jericho, the cities around it and down near Death Valley, they were down in the valley, and so there was a significant, in Death Valley, um, uh, the Dead Sea area, is one of the lowest, I think it is actually the lowest spot on earth. So Jerusalem was up on a high defensive fortress. So when we put those things together, we can think of God as offering us our defense, our safety, and, and his presence. So we want to put ourselves and those are a physical positions, but I want to move beyond that into spiritual. We want to put ourselves in the spiritual place of God's salvation, right? a place that is secure, a place that is safe, and a place that will last forever. How do we do that? Well, there's only one place, and it's not a physical place. It's Jesus Christ. He is the one who is the solid rock. He is the sanctuary in which we can find spiritual refuge and strength. He is the fortress, right, that offers us God's protection. So we can think of a sanctuary as a place where God is present and there's safety. We can think of a fortress where God defends us 
but that's all spiritually within Jesus Christ. He is our salvation. And, and collect, that's what salvation is. That means that we are in a place that we have the presence of God, the safety of God, and the defense of, of God with us all the time. Now, how we must go into that sanctuary, that fortress, that, uh, that rock of salvation, Jesus Christ. We must recognize that he is our savior. That, that's the only place that we can go to where we're not going to be on shifting sand. The only place. And he's, he's not going to change on you, right? Jesus Christ is not going to change on you. Hebrews 13.8 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same as yesterday, today, and forever. We can say tomorrow or forever. He is the solid rock upon which we need to stand that will never give way. I remember um, years ago hiking out in uh, Laurel Highlands, and remember I told you before, I'm, I don't, I'm not a, afraid of a lot of things except one thing, heights. So there's a place up there called Beans Rock. Has anyone ever been up there in the Laurel Highlands? Um, it overlooks a precipice and a uh, really high cliff. And these rocks jut out over this massive gorge. And people go out there to the end like this and look around. I'm back like 30 feet. There's like no way I'm, I'm going to be out there. But those rocks, as solid as they are, um, someday they will fall. Right? That's what Psalm 46 says. The earth will give way. Those rocks will not be there forever. They may be there a long time. They may be there hundreds, thousands of years. I don't know. I don't have a date. But I can guarantee you this. At some point, those rocks are going to give way. And that's the way a lot of things in our lives are. The only thing that will never give way is Jesus Christ, who is what? The rock of our salvation, who will never fall. Why is God immutable? I want to go there a little bit. Why is God un immutable, unchanging? Because there is no place for God to change to, right? If, now, knowing that Jesus is God, right, we believe that as Christians, that God reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If Jesus and God are, they're, they're total perfection, God is total perfection. Where can God go? Is God, gonna, is God able to get any worse? No. Can he get any better? No, he can't. Why can't he get any better? Because he's already perfect, right? That's why God's unchanging. Where's he going to go to? Right? Now, me, ask my wife, I want some room for improvement, right? <laughs> uh, you know, like we, we can improve. We talk about being on a journey, right? All the time we talk about going on to Wesley and belief. Methodist belief is talking, always talks about going, doing better, going on to perfection. I hope that's why we're one of the reasons we're all here is because, you know, we want to be better believers in Jesus. But for God, for Jesus, there's no room to move to. He can't get any better and he can't get any worse. That's why he's unchanging. He, he, first Peter says that first Peter chapter 2 verse 22 says Jesus Christ cannot approve or get worse because he is perfect and that is where he will, has always been before there was a beginning before there was a creation God was always there and he was absolute perfect and God will always be perfect however and here's the point I was making a little bit earlier while God is unchanging immutable he is not immobile right so don't mix those two concepts up. They're very different. Unchanging does not mean immobile. Thanks be to him that he is responsive to us. And he is not necessarily attached to our styles and traditions. I already gave you a long list of stuff like cars and phones and milkmen and all that kind of stuff. Um, things come and go as far as stuff. Clothing is another thing. Next week I want to see all you ladies back in your white gloves and hats. We'll see how that goes, right? Probably don't even have it in any, anymore. But um, think about something like, uh, I'm going to just put this out there, like a Christmas Eve service, probably one of the more popular services. Everyone loves the candle lights and all that. But Christmas uh, wasn't, wasn't, isn't really a big thing in, in God's Word, right? 
It, it never, it talks about Jesus' birth, to tell you a story, only two of the Gospels talk about it, two don't. Um, but there's nothing to say that that's supposed to be a big celebration. It's just telling the backstory of Jesus. Actually, Easter is way more important. So, you know, we get attached to a tradition. In fact, for the longest time, Christmas was one of the Catholic feast days. And if you follow Catholic faith, they have lots of feast days. Many, you know, Feast of St. Stephen, the Feast of... They have many, many of these extra, like, holiday things and feast days. Well, the Protestant Church only picked up on them very recent, and even the Catholic Church, they weren't big celebrate. They weren't, like, big things. Um, but then over the last few decades, Christmas and, and Christmas Eve service has become very, uh, very big thing. But it hasn't always been like that. Because why? It's a stop. There's not one word in the scripture that says, you have to have a Christmas Eve uh, candlelight service, and you have to sing Silent Night, too. Okay? <laughs> Um, so, so those kinds of things, they, they, they tend to come and go. Styles come and go. But God is not the flavor of the day, right? We see that all the time in personalities, movie stars, right? What, who was the in-person in the 50s was not the one who was the in-person in the, the 70s. And, you know, no one talks much about Marilyn Monroe anymore. Or Fa Remember Farrah Fawcett, you know, and for all these angels in the 70s. And, you know, the styles come and go, but God doesn't. Now, okay, we're getting close to my hour. I think that's my limit. I don't want, uh, want you to get the coronavirus by me talking too much. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I guess I shouldn't joke about that stuff. But, okay. uh, lastly, I want to touch upon Psalm 4610, right? Same, same passage I read today. This is probably the most well-known verse in this passage. It says what? Be still and know that I am God. So all the chaos that goes around us, we need to stop and just be still and know that God is God. For the love of God, turn off the TV. Like, seriously, stop looking at the internet all the time. I mean, if you just watch that stuff, you turn off, like, you, if you just live your life, enjoy your life, you'll be much better off than, I mean, you have to keep informed, but don't watch, consume that stuff. It's like a poison. That just repeats the same stuff over and over. Um, so he, just be still and know that God is God. And often people find themselves running around like chicken little. The sky's falling in. The sky's falling in. It's the end of the world. The end of the world. This is horrible. Nothing's ever happened like this. And I say, please get a perspective on history. Go get a history lesson. Um, I, I just picked up the other day. I've been reading. When I was a, I loved uh, when I was a, a kid. Uh, the Little House on the Prairie, right? The story of Laura Ingalls. And, uh, and so I, I'm reading now, it just came out a couple years ago. I got it online from the Carnegie Library. It's, a, it's her biography written by the same person who helped write her books. And she's telling her backstory, you know, the real story of Laura Ingalls' life. And they're talking about up in Minnesota and Wisconsin and how the settlers came in and the hardships they lived with. and. And, and then they really didn't treat the Native American Indians very well at all. And they were attacked by them. And there really were these attacks. And, and, but they basically told them, eat their own feces or, or, or grass. They, went, they, they reneged on deals all the time. The Indians attacked. People were massacred. You know, there was starvation and storms and you know, bad crops and all sorts of things. And people were trying to live on grass and, and little shanty huts and everything like that and and we, we like what's happening now is like nothing compared to that so and, and, and in the midst of this this is in the early 1860s what's happening in the early 1860s in the middle of all this the civil war is raging right so um i always say you know there's been a lot of tough times in history um, think about the depression think about the civil war think about everything else that has happened uh throughout uh, the plagues that have happened throughout history. So what we're experiencing is just, it really is a bump in the road. That's all it is. If you look at things from a historical perspective, this is a bump in the road, and uh, we'll get through it. It could be a lot worse. Maybe it will be. I don't know. But the bottom line is, don't be fearful. No matter what happens, we just have to be still and know that God is God. That hasn't changed at all. So, when you feel like the chicken little and the sky's falling in, when you're feeling like that, maybe we all do at times, I just suggest to you, 
open up your Bible to Psalm 46 that we read today. Find your special place out in your garden, your lawn, your favorite chair, wherever it may be. Um, open your heart to hear God speak and prayerfully read Psalm 46. Right? I preached about that week, last week about how the different ways that we need to be connected to God. And uh, you can go, I think that's still up on the website, all the things that we need to do. And one of the things I listed was searching the scripture and prayerfully reading it. So just be still, right? Be still and know that God is God. God's love is always reigning over us, no matter what happens. And it, it always will. I guess I don't have anything else to say, so I'll say amen. I could say more. I could talk for another hour or something. I don't want to go over the, the corona limit. So, Okay, so I think we do have the words for um, the, uh, the last hymn we picked uh, is uh, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. I don't know how good it is fit. I just picked this because I just wanted to hear it. So, <laughs> Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. <laughs> but the blood of Jesus. He's the one who gives us hope and peace. Go in his name. Go in the name of the Father. And go in the name of the Holy Spirit. Hope to see you all, if not before, next week, whether online or in person. Amen.